questions about the bear's diet before we uh, climb a little further up this hill. Yeah. Um, don't they have to like eat a lot so they can get strong when the winter comes and all that? That's what. That's why they have to eat so much and all that. That's right. They have to put on a lot of weight before they den up for the winter. And acorns, which are nuts, just like for people, nuts are really fattening. So when they eat all those nuts in the fall, they put on a lot of bulk for the winter. That's mm. absolutely right. <laughs> have you had to send any bears away because they were eating people food? When you say send them away, uh, what exactly do you mean? <laughs> well, I didn't want to really say. I don't know, but it, I just heard that, you know... Um, bear heaven? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk actually a little bit about bear heaven a little later on the trail. Sometimes we do. We'll talk about that in a bit. But, Thank uh, you. Mostly we try to chase them away. Great, thanks. We'll talk about that in detail. Okay. Yeah? Is this thing called Bye Bye Bear? Well, part of it is decomposing naturally, but um, there's a very good possibility that this was clawed by a bear a while ago. Not recently, or we'd see the claw marks, but because it's decomposed a fair bit since then, it's kind of hard to tell. But it's quite likely that it would have been. I'll show you a tree a little further down the trail that has been clawed by a bear. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks. Uh, how many bears are there nearby here, is your experience as a ranger? Well, we don't have an exact count of all the bears in the park because we'd have to tag them all to know, but probably the population is in the low thousands. Yeah, we have a lot of bears. Yeah, we have a lot of them, and I've seen a fair number of them so far this summer. Thousands just in this park or in Sequoia Kings Canyon together. Because they're, you know, adjacent to each other. So a fair number. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and you can also see how high the claw marks go. Now while black bears certainly aren't nearly as big as grizzlies, when they get up on two feet, they're fairly big critters. What about the difference between black bears and grizzlies? What kind of bears do we have in this park? Just black bears, right? Uh -huh. We used to have grizzlies, that's right. The last grizzly bear in California was killed in 1922, just outside this park. So even though that's on our state flag, when we were the Bear Republic, that's a grizzly bear on the flag, we haven't had grizzlies in a long time. Now sometimes folks say, hey, why can't you just reintroduce the grizzly? You know, like we reintroduced the wolves in Yellowstone? Well, the reason we can't do that is because the grizzlies that were native to California were kind of a subspecies, and they're different from the Rocky Mountain grizzlies. They live mostly in the foothills and the lower elevations. So that particular type of bear is gone now. And even if we tried to reintroduce a grizzly in the foothills, what's happened in the foothills in California in the last 70 or 80 years? <laughs> Houses. Yeah, we have 20 million people living there now, so... A lot of their habitat, or almost all of their habitat, is gone. Now there's some ways that you can tell the difference between a grizzly and a black bear, because some parks in this country have both. Like say up in Glacier, for instance, or various places in the Rockies. And a couple ways to distinguish the two. One of which is not by color. Because, are all black bears black? No. No. What color can a black bear be? Brown. Okay. Black, cinnamon, brown, one more. Blonde. Blonde. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, they could be blonde. So they could be any color. Black bear refers to the species name. A grizzly bear, by species, is a brown bear. So when you hear people talking about black versus brown bears, they're talking black versus grizzly bear. So color isn't a good way to tell them apart. And just to prove that, I have another piece of bear in here. And I'll kind of pass this around. This is some fur from a black bear. And as you can see, it's not black. You, kind of, you can rub that and feel what it's like. But there are some ways besides color to distinguish them. 
Now, first of all, grizzlies are a lot larger than black bears, up to two to three times as large. A black bear, a male, might max out at about 250 pounds and a female at about 150, and a grizzly can easily be two or three times that large. So size is one way. Another way is shape. If you see a black bear walking along or running along on the ground, what's the highest part of the bear? Like the highest off the ground? Shoulders? It's bottom. Yeah, it's behind. That's the highest part. A grizzly, on the other hand, its highest part is its shoulders. It has longer fore, fore limbs than a black bear and has this huge hump in the back and that's all its muscle being attached to its shoulder blades. So, so a grizzly will be higher at the shoulders. Another way to tell them apart is that a black bear has kind of a gently sloping snout. Its face kind of goes down in sort of a diagonal line. But a grizzly bear has sort of a protrusion in its snout. kind of comes down and then it goes out like that. Whereas in the black bear, it's more of a straight line down the face. <laughs> so the, the protruding <laughs> snout is another way to tell. Now, black bears generally do not attack people. Matter of fact, in 106 years that this park has been in existence, no one has ever been killed by a black bear. Mm -hmm. We've had more people killin', killed by limbs falling off of giant sequoias than we've had from black bears. Grizzly bears, on the other hand, will sometimes attack people. It's not their nature to, but in extreme situations they might do so. So, if you see a black bear, you don't really need to be very nervous. If you see a grizzly bear, you do need to be extremely cautious. Now, if you see a black bear, there's a couple of things you can do, and I want to ask you what some of them are. If you see it in a campground, what should you do if you see a, a black bear in a campground? Yell and wave your hands. Yeah, yell and scream and bang pots and pans together and hold your hands above your head. Yeah. <laughs> Um, be really tall, like if you have someone with you, maybe you could like, maybe they could pick you up and then you could scream and yell and make it scare it away. Right, exactly, Please. very good. Because even though the black bears might look a little scary, they're really not all that ferocious. And even though they're very, very intelligent, they could think, they can reason, and they can remember. Even though they're very, very smart, they think we're just bigger, more dominant bears. <laughs> so if you scare them, they will run away. But do you have to always scare a bear? Every time you see a black bear, do you have to scare it away? Now, when might you not scare it away? If it's turned in its regular habitat. Very good. When it's, she said when it's in its regular habitat. If you're out hiking on a trail and you see a bear in the distance, and as long as it's not running right up to you and scaring you, if it's just out in the woods or out in the meadow being a bear, you don't have to scare it away, right? You could just stop and watch it and have this great experience of watching the bear. The only time you need to actually scare it away is if it's in the campground or if it's threatening you in some way, if you feel, if you feel afraid of it for some reason. But otherwise, you don't have to. Okay, now I have a question for you. And it's a trick question, so think carefully. Do bears hibernate in the winter? They do. Okay, I hear a couple yeses. They are not true hibernators. She's right. Maybe that's some competition here. 